that is continuous and deliberate and vile and you raise that in that context then you become culpable the hostility and the causes of it and he's been on the sharp end of it so. yes yes yeah. We have to be on the other side. Oh, fine. That side. Otherwise, we might have fights. Okay. Yeah. So I understand that uh, you you guys have had a ongoing conversation about the shall we say the intensity levels at Speaker's Corner. I know that recently the recent past, you've been yeah. on the on the receiving end of some physical activity. Uh, so I imagine you have some strong opinions about it, um, and I guess some of these, some of the instability, tends to uh, surround the Christian Muslim uh, kind of dialectical yeah. Yeah. in the park. Yeah. That tends to be the debate that dominates, and so we are all, whether we are part of that or whether we are just outside of it. We all see it, and to some extent, we've pulled into it occasionally. So it'll be interesting to get your guys, uh, you guys' opinions on it. I think maybe given the recent uh, events, I have to we give you an opportunity to yeah. say how you feel acutely about uh, the most recent um, situation and maybe your view on it and your wider feelings. Yeah. So as you said, uh, we've been having these conversations and we know that um, we've been predicting actually it's, it's a matter of time where something serious does happen because uh, the level of you know. Um, the level of tension that is building up in the park um, is is not healthy. It's not good for discussion. You know, it's not uh, it's not helping proper discussions taking place. You know, you have find insults being hurled across and a lot of tension on both sides, and that has resulted in in, in you know the, what happened last week is just again um, one of the symptoms. And and if this is unchecked, it's going to become something even worse. Uh, there are lots, lots of people who are watching, and uh, you know they are, they are forming their own opinions as well. And some of them might land up at the park and, and do something even more drastic. So uh, we need to set the record straight. We need to, you know, lay the platform. Um, what is freedom of speech? Uh, what are the limits? Uh, as um, you know, my brother would say here that there should be some limits for the, for this freedom of speech and, and, and what exactly constitutes a violation. In my personal opinion, I believe, yes, uh, there, are, there are two different things here. One is legally what you're allowed to do and ethically, your your ethics, what what what, uh, motive, uh, what is your ethics and what you do according to the ethics. The ethics can stem from your own personal belief or it could stem from your cultural beliefs or your religion. When it comes to legal, uh, legally, we are protected by the freedom of speech. We can speak about whatever we want to, uh, sometimes even about religious figures. And, and I know that that could uh, stir up emotions on the Muslim side, you know, talking about religious figures, talking about Christian figures that happens all the time. So, you know, in the, in the West, they built up this uh, resilience. So even if you talk about it, yeah, we, we, we've heard these arguments before and, and they're more passive towards it. But in Islam, it probably is something new and that's why Muslims react a little more uh, aggressively when, when they hear this. Especially, and I would say this on record as well, it's mostly the new Muslims who come here to the park. The regulars, they used to, they, they know it, um, they, they've probably dealt with these arguments before. But when new Muslims come here, they hear Christians or they hear, you know, arguments about Muhammad, um, immediately that gets them triggered and they want to do something. And many of them I, I, you are visibly you know, coming here for probably on a visit or something like that and, and they get aggressive. Again, coming back to my opinion, uh, Speaker's Corner is the bastion of free speech. Legally, they are entitled to speak or voice their opinion. And what I feel is if you feel that uh, you're, you're too weak, you know, you can't handle those arguments. And when you hear these arguments, you want to throw fists at, at, at somebody else. It's better those people stay at home. To the people who are here in the park and who, who can handle that argument, engage in a conversation. If the person is not willing to engage in a conversation with you, move away. I mean, we, we are adults here. 
and, and, and it doesn't make it, it, it seems more like your animal instincts get the better of you when when we, we are trying to fight and to you know raise pests or other abuses with each other. Would you like to weigh in with your with your views? I think generally the general atmosphere of Speakers Corner has been great. Generally. And the most people here in Speakers Corner, most of them, including the regulars, they do not advocate violence. And if there's any chance of any kind of violence, I know for a fact, I have a lot of confidence, everyone will group together and stop that violence. Now, I have been part of solving violence issues, and this brother here is a Christian brother, supported me. You and I, ourselves, Cyrus, we got involved in situations that could have triggered violence. But the most of it, I don't think is that bad. But I think it's not that bad. Now, two things. I don't subscribe to the idea that religion is responsible for any kind of violence, whether in speaker's corner or otherwise. I think the violence is a human quality. Now, there's this sporadic thing where two people end up in a conversation and in the spur of the moment, get heated and get a little scruffling and then they get settled down and they make peace in the form back. But what I really want to talk about is the intent. There's an intent by some individuals to provoke, to incite and to express a certain type of insult. And I feel that behavior is not religious and I would argue it's not even legal and I think it's not healthy. So if people come here for whatever religion you come from, religion or no religion, and you come with the intent, not sporadically, not randomly, but you come with the intent to insult and to provoke and to incite violence and hatred, which is very clear, and you and I know who those people are, I think this is what should be the main topic. Now, we're talking about freedom of speech. But you are a Christian, I am a Muslim, and my religion comes above freedom of speech. Now, I understand freedom of speech, but I don't understand it the way other people understand it, like yourself. Freedom of speech does not give me the license to provoke and incite hatred and violence. It does not give me that. I understand freedom of speech, but people cannot use freedom of speech as a license to provoke that. And that's what I want to challenge. That's what I'm here to challenge. And the question is, as the intent to insult people's prophets, any of the prophets, whether it's Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, Abraham, the intent to insult or provoke violence by that, that is a behavior. It's not Christian. And I don't even think that this behavior is supported by the law. So while we're talking about that, we have to address the cause and the intent. But I would always say, Cyrus, with all confidence, and correct me if I'm wrong, the random little heated arguments and the little heated pushing and scruffling, that gets resolved. Very, that gets resolved. Most of us will not tolerate that. But what we see is a continuous, habitual intent to provoke violence and insult. And then some people now will come and say, that is freedom of speech, and that is what I'm here to challenge. Uh, in terms of the, the point you make or, or the suggestion you raise about the legality of some of the things that are said here, I think if we were maybe, you know, 100 meters that direction, I, I, I think uh, I, I, would, I would agree with you. I would agree with you wholeheartedly. I think Speaker's Corner, the lines tend to get blurred a little bit, and I think even in the eyes of the law, I could be wrong, but my understanding is that even in the eyes of the law, there is more flexibility for speech that one may find offensive in any other circumstances outside of the corner. Because the corner has its own set of rules, I believe, even in legislation, that makes it a place where not only but you kind of have to be prepared to hear things that you might otherwise not hear somewhere else. And often you get tourists, and especially in the, the last couple of months with um, stuff like um, Winter Wonderland or in the summer when we have festivals, you get a much more foot, foot traffic through the park. And I mean, sometimes you'll see people's eyes popping out of their head, listening to some of the things that are getting said here that we 
hear we hear every week, but they don't hear outside. So I think there there is a slightly different uh, threshold in the corner. My interest in particular is in the, the preservation of what we have here. This is a special institution and it's something that we should all be mindful about preserving. And I think, and I agree with you to, to an extent, we, as participants here, we tend to police each other. Um, we will go around and, you know, maybe where things are starting to bubble up, we can go and have a word in someone's ear and say, look, you know, allowing this to escalate isn't going to be of benefit to anybody and we kind of calm things down or people have a word with themselves but it feels like there's always something just simmering just just below boiling point so to speak and i think maybe calmer heads should prevail in in these situations and it's sad because sometimes it takes um something to bubble over before there's a reset but we don't want and sometimes it's a chain reaction you know one one event can lead to another can lead to another or retribution and so on and, and that's that, that's what we need I to bring that under because, control uh, the, the number of events are actually going up if you look at it in the recent past there's, there's been a number of events and, and but before i go to that just to second you uh speaker's corner was formed you know uh, when people just before they were hanged um for treat probably even for treason uh, they would come here to this place and they would give their final speech and in their final speech anyway they're going to be hanged so uh, they could speak about just about anything even treason which is guilty of death so that that's the origins of this corner so uh, it, it can, the, the tradition is that we could just speak about anything and i agree with you sometimes when you speak the intent could be real could be wrong again i do not want to judge anybody and i've seen both on the muslim side and on the christian side there are people who say inflammatory things right so let me not judge their intentions but let me say this whether it's christian or muslim or whoever comes here and says something inflammatory they have the legal right to and, and and that's something that we have to protect i do not like it when certain people say something disrespectful uh, of christianity but at the same time that doesn't give me the license to get angry and to physically do but something that, that's why i disagree with you it. I'll, I'll tell you why I disagree with you. No, let, let May I? Let no, no, carry on. Keep it, keep it in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, it doesn't give me the license to react physically with physical violence or incite violence or even, you know, uh, uh, provo yeah, that's to provoke somebody else into violence. It doesn't give me the license to. Ethically, and you spoke about you appeal to religion. Uh, from a religious point of view, I know that uh, as a Christian, that's not something we should indulge in. Again, I do not want in, uh, uh, you know, to judge people's intentions. They might be doing it that way with the right intention. I, I do not know. They might be doing it with the wrong intention. That's up to them, uh, right? Whoever you're, you're, you're referring to. And again, I'm saying it's on both sides. So the intention is something that they have to judge for themselves. But when it comes to the law, they have the right to, to go ahead and do it. Um, yeah. You, what, so what was it you, you disagreed with? Um, I think you, you mentioned people have a right to say what they want, but they don't have a right to, to turn to it into a physical, to respond physically. And you said you disagree at that moment. Yes. Not just respond physically, even to incite, because that also happens. You, you see people inciting violence, you know, uh, saying same things to motivate other people into violence. Uh, last week, the, the same crowd that assaulted me, uh, I saw physically at least on two occasions um, some people pushing others from behind into into the into the Christian. If you don't mind me interjecting, I think we'll get to the specifics of last yeah. week. Let's let's address the uh, the challenge and then we and then we can move it forward. Yeah, this this is where you and I, sorry, strongly disagree, and where we strongly disagree is on two counts. Number one, we are talking specifically about. Muslim and Christian tension that is often lead to some kind of physical assault or violence. And both Muslim and Christians, they have moral and religious responsibility that is sanctity of life. We have that responsibility. Now, as a Christian, I strongly disagree with him off camera last week when he was talking about what caused the violence and he was saying what caused the violence is protected under freedom of speech. Now, I condemn the violence, I condemn the aggression, I condemn the assault, and there's no excuse for it. I don't, I don't want that to get mixed up. There's absolutely no excuse for it. 
But what I find as a Christian or as a Muslim or anybody of faith, you have strong faith, you have a moral responsibility. Number one is anytime somebody intent, let me use this word intent. Intent means in this case, week after week after week, month after month after month, you come in speakers corner saying the same exact insulting thing. You refuse to preach your religion. You refuse to evangelize your belief, but you come here every day, you insult Muhammad, you insult Jesus, you insult Moses, you insult Abraham, and you use the foulest and vile language. Now, when that happens, if you defend that, you defend that under freedom of speech, you protecting that under freedom of speech, I'm saying that is not Christian of you. If I defend that vile, foul provocation, week after week, month after month, continuously, if I defend that, that's not Islamic of me. Now, if I defend it, one day the consequences of that is going to fall on me. If you defend that vile, foul provocation, you defend that, one day the consequences of that aggression is going to fall on you. So what I'm saying, if we mentally say, we must prepare to accept this, this vile, continuous, deliberate intent to provoke hatred and violence if we continue to defend that or kind of set a room or set the atmosphere we accept this if we do that number one that's not moral responsibility number two that's not christian that's not muslim that's not religion and if we do that him specifically to me we as a christian as a muslim he is not allowed to put freedom of speech above his religion he's supposed to put his religion first his religious duties and morals first and freedom of speech in context with that. I'm not allowed to do that. Uh, let, me, let me respond to that. Yes. Muslims and Christians are two components of Speaker's Corner. Um, but just to play devil's two advocate. Of the many. But devil, to play devil's advocate, this is not uh, Muslim Corner. This is not Christian's Corner. So as a, as a neutral to that particular uh, dichotomy, I don't feel it's fair on people of other faiths or of no faith to come to a place which is renowned for protection of speech to be dragged in or to be endangered because of this, uh, you know, this kind of adversarial approach that some Christians and some Muslims take to what happens here ultimately i think the the greatest influence on either the christians or the muslims will be the christians and the muslims themselves so a, a muslim may sit on one side of the aisle and decry the actions of the christians and the christians may do the same but ultimately you will have a greater influence amongst the Muslims as a Muslim yourself. You will have a greater influence amongst Christians as a Christian yourself. So there is a lot of, you know, look inward looking that needs to be done as well. So I think this is a kind of, a, this is a position that will never be resolved necessarily, ideologically. But, but Christians look at, and Muslims will look always, at this, right? always dominate I, the park. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. go No, you go. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I, I agree with you and I don't agree with you in certain aspects. Let me clarify that. So, as, as the brother said, so it's Christian and Muslims are just two components of the many uh, different uh, faiths that come here and even the religious who come here, the atheists who come here. Now, if we are going to put limits on the freedom of speech, remember, um, freedom of speech can also turn against me. I mean, the, it gives the right to anybody, an atheist, to blaspheme my religion. Right? It does. But if you're going to put limits on freedom of speech, you, you, you're, you, you're, you're doing that right in the bastion of the of, of free speech. This is the only place in the world that has this, you know, this unique uh, platform where you can come and speak about anything. But, and they how tried can this you? In some, they tried this in some parts of the United States, which you would think, you know, the the land of freedom and liberty, 
The problem in the United States is people carry guns. And that's why it didn't work. <laughs> that's why it doesn't work okay. in the United States. Yeah, so right. we have a unique set of circumstances. This is a unique circumstances. platform. And we should not do anything to kill that platform. Because we're using this platform for different reasons. And, and, and to, you know, to say that there should be limits on the freedom of speech undermines the platform itself. Now, when you have the freedom of speech, there are going to be certain consequences. And if you can deal with those consequences, that's why I say, if you can deal with the consequences, if you can handle those consequences, that's when you can come here and use it. If you're not able to do it, then this is not the place for you, right? So I know where a place where I'll be comfortable and a place where I'm not going to be comfortable. And it's up to me, you know, to, if I go there, I have to respect those boundaries that I'll set over there. Here, there are no boundaries. Right? There are no boundaries in, in terms of conversation. So you can say whatever you want. My response to that is that, number one, we don't want to... Uh, good things has been said. I appreciate the lovely contribution. And I agree with most of what you're saying. I personally, which you already know, maybe this is unresolved today. I find you come across more of a freedom of speech advocate than a Christian to me. Yeah, let me no, 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 wait, just one second. Wait, yeah. Yeah. First, first of all, so in these conversations, you come across as a freedom of speech. Than much more as a Christian. For me, I'm saying these behaviors, they're not religious. They're not religious at all. First of all, they're not religious. And secondly, if there's a freedom of speech agenda, we have a moral responsibility to preserve the sanctity of life. And anything that violates that, that will trigger that, we have a moral responsibility towards human behavior. Now, yeah. if it is that beliefs influence behavior, if that's correct, then the beliefs of the Christians or the Muslims who provoke the violence should be addressed. And I am saying, which is a conversation you would like to deny, I'm saying there's an intent that is continuous, that is very obvious, that is vile and provoking, inciting this violence. Now, you are saying to me, you don't want to judge. Now, you don't want to judge and you don't want to judge intentions. Now. I am saying when an intention is manifest and it's continuous and it's not random and every day you abandon teaching your scriptures and you just come in here, Muhammad is this, Muhammad is this, your mother is this, your father is this, because they know culturally, culturally people get sensitive about their mothers in this religion and you want to provoke violence in order to prove my religion is violent. Now I'm saying to you, there are people who perpetuate those behaviors continuously. Now, if you raise the preservation of freedom of speech in that context, then you're culpable for the, the violence that happened here. How? I'll let you respond. Yeah, right. No, no, I'll let you respond. I'll, I'll reserve. I'm, I'm saying, if one raises the flag of unlimited freedom of speech in a context where there's provocation that is continuous and deliberate and vile, and you raise that in that context, then you become culpable. Right. So, you know, uh, I'll respond to that, right? yeah. So, again, I said when you have the freedom of speech, it comes with consequences. And this is one of the consequences that you will probably aggravate somebody else. And I, 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 I made it clear. People who are coming here should respect that this is a platform of free speech. And when you come here, you know that, that you could hear things which are going to get you agitated. Don't come here if you're going to get agitated. So if you're coming here, it means that you're going to keep your emotions in check. If you can't, then you should not come here. No, you, you feel... There's a gentleman. Let me get... I want to... I want to cite a case, a case study. No, let me finish this. Oh, carry on, let sorry. Me finish this. Carry on. So, because you also appeal to the Christian side, and I, I didn't address that. As a Christian, I believe that we should respect everybody who, who is here. And, and that's what my faith teaches me to respect, not to incite violence. That is my Christian faith. However, these are two separate things that we're talking about. One is the freedom of speech, the platform that is established here, because it's not just the Christians who are coming here. As he said, there are other people of other faiths as well. And uh, again, just to make it clear, 
if you can't keep your emotions in check because you're going to hear things which you do not like, if you can't keep those emotions in check, then, then this is not the platform that you should use. You can't come to the platform and say, no, I want it changed uh, to suit my 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 faith. You, you can't do that. This, this is a secular platform that was created for all of us. Let's use it, Cyrus, not misuse it. You're familiar with what the European Union says about freedom of speech? I, I, I think I, I, sent, I, I sent it to you in a text. Right. I remember we having a conversation. Right, right. So maybe the, sometime last, in the middle of last year, right. and you sent me a message on freedom of speech. And I said to you, according to the European Union, it said freedom of speech does not give a person license to provoke or advocate hatred or religious violence. And if someone was to be insulting Muhammad, and trying and using that under the free of speech, it may work against them. So, yeah. and, I, first, and I cited it to you. In and I my said, first contribution in this conversation, I drew a line between what happens out there and what happens here. And it's just my understanding. And I could be wrong, but this is my understanding, is that there are a different set of rules for this particular, whatever it is, uh, square 100 meters or so. Before I ever came here, I familiarized myself with the style of debate by watching YouTube videos, wow. yeah? The likes of which people are watching now. And I decided before I came that I have to come with my armor on. As in, if there is anything in, li in my life that a conversation about can provoke me to a deeply emotional response, it's better I don't come. Mm. That's, this is my personal view. And I always advise people, I invite people all the time, but I always add a caveat. If you're going to come, make sure it's on a day when you cannot be easily provoked <laughs> by, by something you might hear somebody say, because when you come yeah. here, you're going to hear people say things that you will not hear outside. outside. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I just want to underline this by saying, this is speaker's corner. This is not fighter's corner. This is not... Um, well said. This is that's what that's kind of where I put it. I un right. underscore that speaker's corner. That means come here, say whatever you want. Be ready to be ridiculed if you say things that are insulting or if you go into it, offend people intentionally. And I don't like it. I don't like it. I come here and I think it's important challenge people, test the claim. Yeah, <laughs> test the claim. But yeah. if you come here with the intention of offending people and upsetting people. It's poisonous, it's toxic, it however, I don't feel that it justifies an escalation to a physical encounter. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean I don't understand it, mm. but it, it's not a justification from my perspective. Yes. You, you used, um, you said it's not Christian and it's not Islamic. It's not. But what argument would you make then to let's say an atheist who was saying similar sorts of things because you can't appeal to religion or faith in that situation so how would you uh, deter someone who doesn't share faith from saying those kinds of things and, and sadly it's christians and muslims saying the most offensive things from my perspective but if you were to try to explain that to someone without faith you can't say well, it's not christian it's not it's not islamic how would you justify um, censuring someone from saying what may be the most offensive things to you for example if they don't have faith if a person may not have faith or Abrahamic faith I am 100% certain that person may be influenced through society and through history mm. by some of the values coming out of faith so we have moral responsibility we have a duty of care we have the sanctity of life so you could be an imbecile or a retard you will understand the sanctity of life has to be pre preserved. You know, and, and the question is, I would appeal to a person's humanity, his moral compass and the sanctity of life. That, that would be my argument. And I don't know a human being in this world who will fail to understand the sanctity of life because he has life and he wants his life to be sacred. He's not saying, come bulge out my eyes, dig out my nose. No, he would like to feel safe. And the, the safety he enjoys, other people has that entitlement as well. But so, so the question, that's how I will address it. But specific to the Christians and Muslims who have continuously been pursuing this path 
of aggravation and provocation, I think they have to appeal to their faith, go back to their faith, and also to be told that their behavior is not religious, it's not religious, it is bad character in the name of religion. It is bad character. Mm. And when you cannot find religion to support your bad character, you're going to use what next? Freedom of speech. And what this is why I'm saying, point out to it. This is bad character and your religion don't support it. Freedom of speech does not support, in my view, my view, and I might be wrong, freedom of speech does not support giving anybody a license to provoke, to incite hatred, or to incite violence. It does not. That's my argument. Uh, and I, I may I not strongly disagree here because yes. we're just coming back to the same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's let's freedom of speech. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> That's your response. Right. And this is a woman. No, it's a classic let me case. Let me come it's to a classic that. case. Let me come to that. Okay. It's going, going, let's going differentiate both this. Yeah. Okay. So we have the freedom of speech which we were talking about, and there's uh, there's absolutely no room for violence or for you know uh, punching or uh, fisting corner or whatever. This is speaker's corner. Freedom of speech is one platform. You're appealing to the religious platform. Yes, as a Christian, I told you that we have moral responsibility. Our faith teaches us that we should not insult, uh, we should treat each other, even our enemies, we should treat them with love. Having said that, how do I respond to this? Something which is just going on right now. Uh, again, I said, I cannot judge the intention. If the intention is bad, I have personally gone and spoken to certain people, asked them, is this what it is? And, and they've completely denied they, uh, the, they said no that this is not what they're trying to do they're trying to do um, they're trying to provoke Muslims into a conversation or to to provoke them into looking at their own <laughs> Provo them into a conversation no, I, I'm not talking about provoke them into getting aggressive they're, they're trying to provoke them into looking at their faith and, and looking at certain things and, and, and did you accept that excuse did you hold on uh, let me finish all right finish. okay so looking at their faith critically provoking them into looking at their faith critically and then understanding why they're saying it you see so sometimes it's like shock therapy. break, break that, that down to me break that down to me can, can since I, you were speaking to them you, you were speaking to them yeah you were speaking to that person yes they explain you're, why you're talking about one person in particular and i'm talking about the same person so right the okay. question is i'm asking they, you provoking the person Muslims into looking into their religion you're provoking them to look into the religion provoking, right again i'm not looking, saying provoking aggressively provoking them into uh, motivating them into looking motivated now let, let, me, let me play that <laughs> okay, 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 sure, go ahead no, we've, I think we've all been around the block enough <laughs> to know that even you, and I know you approach this conversation with, with sincerity and because you want to try to build a pathway to a safer environment here, yeah. but it's clear that there are a handful of people on either side of, of this right. divide who, who come out, and we know who they are, and yeah, they come right. out to provoke because whether again, we, whether you, you're using to provoke and again i use the word provoke but i use the word provoke in a different i, I believe that context. even in some instances yeah. there is an intention to provoke a physical reaction yeah, I, I think that's the I, I, I don't think somebody I think in their the right, right mind would you know say something to provoke a physical reaction i, I don't really think somebody would do that. I, I think that i, I think it, it seems unlikely really from my from my perspective i I believe it happens. Unless I think it's the vast ma minority of the time, mm -hmm. but I think it does happen because what what that does is it provides a gotcha moment. It provides a uh, <laughs> uh, a clip with which to uh, villainize the other side. And I'm, I'm not saying I think it happens on both sides. I think it happens on both sides. I, I, I'd rather now look for an opportunity to 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 build to to find a positive let's say positive conclusion to the conversation okay. mm -hmm. so i would ask you both the islamic and the christian approach when you see a conversation reaching a crescendo reaching that boiling over moment when it's coming when you see it coming what is the what would be the the christian approach to that impending moment what's the right thing to do from your perspective and from the islamic perspective so uh, in fact a little while ago i think it, it was coming to that point just now uh, what i would do is go in and probably move up, move away the person who is you know uh, offending the other whether they're right or wrong de-escalate the tensions mm -hmm. I, I think that's the first thing that we do um 
I, I already told you that I've spoken to the person about their intentions. What are the intentions? Is it to insult or is it for something else? And, and clearly what they say is, you know, they want them to look at their own scriptures, to look at their own religion critically and uh, probably something positive comes out of Let's that. Let's not get hung up on a, right? specific, so, on yeah. a specific person. Right. No, because we were talking about something specific. I understand. So, That's so, what I'm trying to but kind of generally, yeah, when, yeah. when we find a situation like this, I always go into de-escalate. And in fact, you think that should be the approach? That should be the approach. And in fact, on Sunday, that, uh, the last Sunday, that's, that's exactly no matter, what happened. No matter who's right or wrong. No matter who. Again, because it, the freedom of speech, tomorrow it could be a Muslim, uh, a Christian might be attacking, I, though I've never come across something like that, but I would do the same thing. If, if a Muslim is getting attacked, this is Speaker's Corner, they have the right to speak whatever they want to. And, and uh, it should be people like us to de-escalate the violence. No, they, they have a right to say it, even if it's insulting. So yeah. I, I know you, you say, you know, it's not for you to judge the intent necessarily, but even where you feel that there is a chance that there is an intent behind okay. it. Or so what if I feel that the intention is wrong? Yes, it's my duty as a Christian to go and correct my brother. Thank you. If they do not listen, I leave it up to them because there's nothing more that I could do. Then the only thing that I can appeal it to is the freedom of speech. Okay. Right. Uh, and uh, I'd like your your view on it as well. The, the Islamic approach to when a situation between a couple of people is starting is to build up point. and starting to reach boiling point. What is sound uh, Islamic advice? What, how should a Muslim be thinking in that moment? when he sees, he or she sees the impending escalation potentially to violence. What should be the approach in an in a environment like this? I think first of all, I am fully aware that there are people in this park who, before they come to the park, they take a drink of alcohol. I've seen people, no, no, you, you, just you, a minute, excuse me, excuse right? me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. First of all, I'm not calling names. And secondly, I'm giving my testimony. Whether you like it or you don't like it, have you seen? No, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I shall repeat myself. I'm giving my testimony of what okay. I know and what I've seen myself. You, you, you weren't interrupted, so let's, 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 right. Yeah. So let me make that clear to you, sir. And I'm saying 100%. I have seen people right in this park who are preachers smoking weed, who are known preachers smoking weed, and I've seen people in this park drinking alcohol while they come in here on their way here. So there are people in this park who drink alcohol, who consume intoxication weed, and there are people in this park here who have mental health issues. Right. Hence the reason why it is dangerous and to some extent hypocritically deceitful to pretend you're breaking up a fight when in the first place the cause of that fight you're not proactively challenging it as a matter of fact you're making excuses for that in the name of freedom of speech so if a person is perpetuating a behavior a manifest continuous intent well-intended behavior that is inciting violence in a place where people have mental health issues where people drink alcohol smoke weed i've seen and i know that fact fact he's trying to deny it and i know why he's trying to deny it i know why he's. but anyway anyway this is my testimony all right now the prophet peace be upon him says in the sitka that truthfulness leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to paradise and this is a conversation we have the part of truthfulness and the name of truthfulness there are people in this park mental health issues drinking alcohol and smoking weed so if someone is inciting continuously violence hatred and provoking in an atmosphere like this and we are not proactive in in, in, in one sense we're quite happy because it's given a dig to the other side we're encouraging it so it's hypocritical to try to break up break up fights or try to reconcile fights or stop fights so my thing is this first premise is when you come to speaker's corner you might be talking to someone appear to be normal and functional you don't know he can have alcohol in his breath i've seen people here who swore and say nasty things against prophet abraham and when i'm trying to engage him he's have a sip it was vodka he was drinking I've seen that right here. So be mindful that when you're provoking that, it might people people here with mental health issues, drinking alcohol, intoxicated. That's number one. Or they come from a culture 
that to insult their mother is on. It's fine. Or to insult the prophet in that nasty way is fine. So, number one. Now, as for the religion now, hear what the religion says. Allah make it very clear. Yeah, that I want to push you to answer my question. Yes, I'm going to answer it now. Now, okay. Allah make it very clear that when you come in contact with a jahil level of arrogance and insult, who insulting Allah and his message. Ignorance. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a degree of behavior. Right. So it doesn't mean the ignorance that is innocent. Like a child is innocent ignorance. Doesn't know, but it's innocent. Right. It's talking about uh, a type of behavior that is intent to be rebellious and to provoke violence and disharmony. Right. Whenever you come in contact with a jahil behavior, Allah says, move away. Turn away from the jahili. He says, give them salams and move away. Right. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, talk about the reward for making peace between people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, and when somebody um, approach you with a bad behavior, repay them with something far better. Give them better words. Kill them with kindness. Right. Now, a lot of Muslims here that I've seen doesn't understand that the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, majority of my nation will enter paradise through they believe in Allah and they have good character. And many of my people are still trying to develop their character. So a lot of people come here for the engagement, but they're not religious. And they're not fully developed in the religious character. So when they engage, the character comes out. So if you're evangelizing or you're preaching, a lot of things that you have about your character reveals through that. So number one, good character is very important. And this is the command of Allah. Whenever you meet a jahil behavior, give salam, say peace, and I move away. Until they return back to something that is um, respectful or cordial. But what I'm saying is hypocritical not to be proactively addressing the continuous and deliberate insult and provocation. And then when a fight comes, you want to break it up. It doesn't make sense. Can, can I? Yeah, can I respond? So um, what he was talking about is he, and this is your testimony, and I'm not going to uh, deny anything about it. I've never seen that. Uh, but yes, I have seen people in the park, and I'm not going to comment whether they. Are How long you been coming here? Uh, one and a half year now. Right, and it never occurred to you in people, cr Christians or Muslims here might be intoxicated. That never occurred to you. I have seen them taking weed. Taking I've weed. Seen them taking weed. Uh, I'm not talking about. Again, I'm not coming into religion here because I do not want to blame one side because I've seen. This is not about side. Yeah, okay. the, the fact of the matter so, is, yeah. you there, were challenging people, me when I was talking about there, there, there people, people here who intoxicated. Yes. They're on both sides, there are people who have taken weed on both sides. I've seen that. Alcohol, I've not seen, so I cannot comment on it. And regarding Christian preachers who have done it, I can't comment on that. Now, again, when we are talking about the freedom of speech, right, and the platform, this platform, which has been given, which is, you know, uh, for the freedom of speech. There are no conditions which are set. You know, you, you should not come in after drinking alcohol. You should not come in. Anybody can come in and use the platform, right? If it gets out of hand, it's people like you and me who are mature enough to step in and, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, um, de-escalate de the situation. That, that's what we're called to do. I, I'm not sure why you're Sorry, calling that I hypocritical. A, a guy. I'm, I'm not sure why you're calling that hypocritical. That's what you're supposed to do because there is no entry. In, entry I want to cite a, a, an experience. I, uh, there's a... a a particular individual he was smoking and i went in i said brother not here please the conversation here is a godly conversation and the behavior here no. and i hold it and he went across there he went by sheikh umar down there and he went and do it so i'm saying there's a moral responsibility no there's no law that, that, he's not compelled yeah, but let, let's, not yeah, but let's not get yeah. sidetracked the last yeah. okay so for example the incident you were involved in last week and also a couple of weeks prior to that there was some very um dangerous language used let's say uh alluding to violent response none of the people involved in that as far as i'm aware were under the influence of substances or alcohol exactly. or what have you so yeah. we have an issue with people who are completely sober completely as well none. so what, what i'm trying to find is the right approach from the respective faiths in how to de-escalate that moment let's 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 deal with that moment and then we can we can attack the root causes 
perhaps in a more holistic way? Number one, take off the cameras. As soon as they start getting really bad, take off the cameras, number one. And number two, number two, more importantly, those like yourself who, when a violence may want to trigger off, you will raise the question of freedom of speech, right? So for example, if someone is insulting your mother and he's saying the most atrocious thing to your God, whoever your God is, right? And that's getting you agitated, I will say to that person, freedom of speech, freedom of speech, this speaker's corner. I wouldn't say that. That's irresponsible. That's insightful. But what I would say to that... Can I join you guys? Yeah, yeah, please. Is it okay? Yeah. Uh, I, think the big man. I, I, I think, no, I think, I think we'll leave it... Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it at three and then no, I'll, I'll come and grab you for another conversation. Shortly. Right. So the question, in that moment, I'll tell you what I will not say. If someone is insulting your God and your mother or the things that they know is dear to you culturally that they should not insult and they poke in that to get a violent reaction then to say <laughs> ah his religion is violent if someone is doing that i will not go at that moment and say freedom of speech you have a right i, I didn't advocate it at that moment sorry i'm i'm just drawing a scenario i would not do that but what yeah. i would do what i would do is to say to that person if he's a, a person of faith i would say something to him based on his faith that compels him not to provoke so there are lots of things in the bible and you can teach me, you know more than me, about against provocation. Provocation is against the law. You know that very well. And aggra aggravating and insulting people and the role of compassionate speech. So there's a lot of things from the scriptures that can stop individuals from behaving a certain way. Now, even those Question scriptures... To you. Question the, to you. No, let them, I'm going to finish now. As provocation? No. Now, right. let, now okay. these terminologies that is in the Bible... Why is it even Cyrus, who is not a Christian, is not aware of these terminologies? That provocation is against the law. And all the different sure cited... No, he's not. Okay. I'm telling you. Right, right. That's why I'm asking him. What is provocation? Not provoking so, because, yeah, I think we'll, we'll, call, we'll, it, we'll I, I'll call it a day now. Uh, we'll come to I, think, I think there's much yeah. more to unpack from this topic. And I think it's a worthwhile conversation yeah. to continue at some point. Um, and I think we've got a lot of fruit out of it so far. And it's, and yeah, if you, I thank you for participating and increase the peace. Increase the peace. <laughs>